So the window came smashed. Oh, I'm so annoyed about it. Delivery drivers, can't they just take care? Like, it's got a big fragile label on it. Look at it. Look at it. That is my side window. God's sake. That's the sliding window, which is okay. That's okay. Everything, it's just been thrown about. God's sake. Look. I need to sh I'll show you this. God. Oh, it's so annoying. Look at it. Oh well. <laughs> Here's what it is. I mean, this one looks okay. So I'll probably keep hold of that. It's not too bad. Oh well, I'm not going to order another one because it'll probably just get broken again. There's a company local to me that said they can fit it. It's quite a lot of money, but I think I'd rather that. At least I know they're going to actually arrive okay, I suppose. It's just frustrating, isn't it? Oh well. Welcome back to my having a go van build. It's May bank holiday weekend and officially the third weekend on the van build. Um, as you just saw, the windows or the big the sliding door window arrived smashed to bits, which is really annoying. So I can't go on with that this weekend. I've only really got one day this weekend. I know I've got other things I need to be doing. Um, so the plan is to tidy up my camera wiring and as I mentioned in the last vlog I want to rewire it so it actually So it works on the switch all the time and not just in reverse I'm gonna do some decent solder joints and heat shrink it instead of my dodgy crimp connectors and speaker connectors I'm not happy about that. So we'll redo that. I'm not gonna dwell on that too much with you guys um, I've also bought a ceiling fan the Fiema Fiema or however you say it uh, turbo 280 or whatever I'll run through that and hopefully get that in this weekend I might have a go at fitting the little side window we'll see how I feel about that I'm gonna watch a few more videos before I officially decide um what else are we gonna try and do today I'm gonna get some other bits and pieces of wiring in some sort of first fixed electrical work again I'm just gonna do it and then I'll talk through with you guys what I've done at the end. I might time lapse it, we'll see how we go on. But it's a beautiful day, it's like 20 degrees. So it's a perfect day for it. Let's crack on.
finally got the camera wired properly with decent solder joints and heat shrunk instead of dodgy connector blocks. And now she works beautifully, I shall show you. So switch down here, as I said before, if I switch that on, hopefully it's not too bright, it should come straight on. There she goes. So now no messing around with reverse, and even if it's not in reverse, I can get the reversing camera on. It's there. Right, turn her off. Sweet, good job. Next task is I'm gonna do some first fix electrical work, pull in the links between the, the alternator battery and the leisure battery, get that done. And I'm gonna mount some boxes on the roof for um, some solar panels and some work lights, really. So I'll get all that done and then I'll talk you through what I've done after that. Another day of success, that's what we want. Right, what you've just been watching me do is run some cables uh, down the length of the van from the alternator battery to the leisure battery. Now, what I've done is ran two 25mm single core tri rated cables uh, for a POS and a NEG uh, to link the two batteries together, and I'll stick a, a split charge relay between the two of them so the alternator will charge the leisure battery when the alternator battery is full and the solar panels and the well i'm using just the battery charger if you like will then charge the alternator battery if the leisure battery is full so the point i've run i've run these little two core one mils in as well just in case really just in case i need anything down the other end and i can't get to it later on so as you'll see i've put these pieces of blocks in by the way because I've ran them in this channel, and as soon as you cover the cables in insulation, it reduces the current carrying capacity of the cables severely. I mean, 25 mil, this will pull about 100, 150 amps, something like that. So if you, as soon as you start covering it in insulation, it, you, you can half it or less. So I've covered these, put these bits of wood, I'm gonna put them in all the way, purely to give a bit of an air gap. I wanna stick them down with a bit of silicon or stick like shit, and then just insulate over top of it. So that'd be fine. So you can see I've just ran them through these old channels in a wheel and then I go to under the seat, my little trough here, I'm going to put a, a little fuse connection in here and then there's a little gap down the bottom here you'll see which runs to the battery so later on I can deal with these, if you're wondering what this is, it's because I've had a flat battery this morning so I'm just charging it up. All right. Next thing to do, I'm going to stick a, uh, a couple of boxes on the ceiling or the roof of the van even um, for the solar panels and for the work lights. So I'll install that and then again, I'll show you what I've done. Cool. Right, I'll show you the crack. Ugh, okay. Right, I've mounted this 85 mil by 85 mil adaptable box on the ceiling. I've used four self-drilling screws uh, in the four corners. I've used some stick-like shit on the inside to stick it to the uh, stick it to the roof, and I've got some clear silicon and just silicon around the outside, just to keep it ultra watertight. Um, that in there, that little gland, is a bit of 25mm Copex, which I'll talk you through in a second. And this is a draw wire. Um, eventually, once the connections are done, there'll be a like a compound that goes inside there, which makes it completely watertight, so it shouldn't ever leak. There will be some glands going here, which we'll show you once I get as far as the solar panels and putting the lights up. There is another one over there, as you can see, which is for a light, which is going to go above the sliding door. 
Well, I'll show you what's happened on the inside. Okay, so this is obviously the roof. Um, these are the four self-drilling screws. Uh, this is the Copex. So what I've done is basically run, Copex is like a flexible conduit. I thought this was a good idea because in the future, if I decide to put anything else in there, then I can. Um, and it also means I can clad it, I can get it insulated and then run all my cables in later, which I haven't got to spend that on all my solar panels and my lights as yet, I can do it later on. Um, so that then runs on the side here, all this is going to get boxed in. I'll tuck in this panel in, comes down here, down here, down here, and then left it here. So my battery bank is going to sit sort of here, like along, right the way along here. Um, as you can see on this, I've stuck my drawer wire in. I just coil, coil up. There somewhere. So it's good. There's one there, and then the front one looks a bit rubbish at the minute, but that's that. I haven't put the comp I haven't put the copex in on this one because I only need one cable just for that light. That's a bit of two core flex which I just ran in with this lot. I decided I'm not going to do a fan. Not going. Not going. Not going. I decided I'm not going to do the fan today because I had a look at it and I realised it's probably better to put it in once it's insulated and the, and the ceiling's cladded. Um, I'm not going to fit the side window either because I'm a little bit nervous about it. I want a company to get it right and the company I spoke to is Ipswich uh, Car Glass and Trim. They specialise in doing this sort of thing and they've, they've said they've got a, uh, a sprinter sliding door window available and they can probably do it next Thursday and it's, it's now Friday. So, um, what else is there? Once all that's done, I'm going to try and get a week off work once it's insulated to just crack on with it. But another decent weekend, another decent day, even. Even, I haven't finished yet. Rock and roll.